Uh, let me start recording in case there are any issues with connectivity. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so I am now recording um, in case there are any issues with internet connectivity. Um, as you guys are aware, uh, we're now a remote class uh, at that, that uh, that's the way that life happens sometimes. Um, because of that, I, I, I'm aware that uh, some students had to uh, uh, start the moving process, moving out of the dorms. Uh, and with that in, in consideration, I have uh, rescheduled the chapter eight homework to be due this coming, uh, coming weekend, this coming Sunday. So that was not, uh, so I, so I uh, have extended that homework. Um, uh, so you should be able to access that. If not, let me know. I might have messed up on some of the settings. Uh, so today we're going to cover chapter nine, um, which is the last chapter we have. We have two sections, 9b and 9c. Uh, 9b is on linear modeling and uh, 9c is exponential modeling. So it is very similar to what we did in chapter eight, just going in a little more detail um, than those sections did. Uh, and then we'll look at some examples um, and for some reason, again, for some reason, the author put the equations in this, uh, in this chapter, in chapter nine, instead of in chapter eight, um, which I, I feel like the, is, a, is a mistake. But um, I did give you those equations uh, last, last time for chapter eight. Um, so I'll, I'll show you what the, what the author presents in these sections and show you what I, the, the equations that I gave you, and they're basically the same, just using different, uh, different letters, different variables, but um, we'll, we'll try and, and stay consistent with that. Uh, okay, so that's, that's what we're doing today. Um, before we jump into the material, uh, are there any uh, questions from uh, anything before any of the previous material, any, any homework questions? Any questions that, that you guys might have? Um, and you can either use the audio. Yeah. Uh, yes, question. Sorry. No, that's um, all right. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted you to explain question eight from the last exam. Question eight from the last exam. Okay, let me. Sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. I have that. Let's see. Let me figure out where I, where I saved that. Um, Oh, I, I see. Okay. Hold, hold on one second. That's a little bit out of reach. One, one second. Okay, so question eight. Ah, yeah, okay, so question eight was the loan payment one. Uh, let me go to uh, my digital paper here. Um, there we go, and let me bring back the, the chat on my window so that I can see if there are any questions being typed. Where is the chat? There it is. All right. Okay, so question eight, there we go. Um, so this was question eight on the exam. Uh, we had for part A, we have a loan that was 25,000, uh, an APR, that was 20%. Uh, and I, hold on, I need to rearrange my windows here. There's some conflicts. It's not letting me uh, write. Uh, 20%. Okay. Um, the loan year. Uh, term, the loan term was five years. 
and we're making monthly payments. So n here is 12. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do with this is you need to um, use the formula, the, the payment formula, uh, which was on the exam. So you have the uh, principal times the APR over n, and then divided by 1 minus 1 plus the APR over n to the negative n times y power. Um, so here, uh, what you should get is you should get 25,000 times the APR. We want that in decimal form, so 0.2 divided by 12, and then divided by 1 minus uh, this 1 plus the APR is 0.2 divided by 12 to the negative 12 times 5 power. And what you should get when you round to the nearest cent at the end, you should get uh, $662.35. So that was part A. Um, now with part, uh, part B, I graded that depending on what you got for part A. So I uh, was, was looking at um, if, you, if, you didn't, if you didn't get the 662, uh, do you still know how to find the final amount and do you still know how to find the interest? And then uh, part C was, was kind of going off of part B. So what you had in part B looking at, how do you, do you know if you, uh, can you show if you know how to find the percent uh, from part B? Um, so uh, that's what I got there. Um, if, you, if you would like to see that in a little more detail, um, then we can go over it during office hours. Um, but that was, that was what you should have gotten for the, for the monthly payment for that. Uh, and I see a question in chat. Um, so last class, we covered uh, chapter eight, which was on linear and exponential modeling. Um, I did upload those, those notes, so you can uh, go through those real quickly. Um, we're kind of going to do a, a, a repeat of those a little more in depth today, since the author uh, split those into two different sections. Um, but we will be we'll be covering uh, linear modeling and exponent, exponential modeling again as well. Um, any other questions um, from any of the material or any of the homework? I do know there's sometimes a little bit of a delay in, in, the, in the chat. Um, so I'll, I'll give you guys a few seconds. I'm gonna keep my eye on the chat. So even if you're still typing, that's fine. I know in, on some devices it's harder to type. Um, but if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and jump into the chapter nine material. And you can also use the audio as well, if you uh, feel brave enough to do so, <laughs> to ask uh, any questions. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm not seeing any questions, I'm going to Go to a, a fresh page here. Uh, let me let me try and get this. All right, and. A few more adjustments here. All right, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any other questions, so we'll go ahead and begin with the chapter nine material. Uh, so chapter nine is on modeling. Um, so chapter nine is on modeling. I'm not going to uh, rewrite the entire thing, which again is uh, using equations.
uh, using equations to solve problems. To solve problems. Usually, um, when we're looking at this type of, when we talk about modeling, most of the time we are actually referring to um, story problems. And uh, so that, that's, that's what modeling essentially means, um, at least in this course. It can mean different things mathematically, uh, but most of the time, uh, I would say probably 90% of the time, uh, when we're talking about modeling, we're talking about using an equation, a uh, specific type of equation to, um, to model, to represent a real world situation, a story problem, if you will. Uh, so that's what chapter nine is focused on. And we're going to be looking at two sections from chapter nine, section 9b, uh, which is on linear modeling. Uh, so looking at uh, linear equations and uh, we'll see the other one, 9c. I just wanna say it's a and b because that's what chapter eight is, but it's uh, b and c in this case. Okay, so 9b, lost my mouse, there we are. 9b is on linear modeling. So again, we're going to be looking at uh, linear equations to represent real world situations. Um, all right. So we'll start off with uh, the general definition of a linear model. So a linear model or linear function or equation. Uh, so let, let's put that in parentheses. Linear model, linear function, linear equation, uh, all of the same thing is a straight line. Okay. Uh, now it's not going to let me use use the entire page, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. Is a straight line when graphed. And has the form uh, y equals b plus mx or uh, as we had in our previous, let me use the same variables I used from chapter eight. Uh, what I used was uh, A equals I plus C times T. Uh, so this one was from uh, chapter eight notes. So you'll notice they are the same, uh, same equation, just using different variables. Um, in chapter eight, I guess we were mostly focused on things growing over time. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at some things. Well, I th think most of these things are changes over time as well. So there are a few examples where it's not, uh, but most of the examples when we're talking about linear modeling, we're talking about uh, uh, something changing in a linear way over time. So it has this, this form, the form of this equation, y equals b plus mx, or the equation that I used last class, last section, was a equals i plus c times t. Um, okay, now uh, what separates linear models or linear equations from the rest of the equations is not only its form, but it has a special property which we call the slope. Uh, so all linear functions or models, linear models, have a constant rate of change. So let's put that in parentheses, rate of change. which we call slope.
And in the equations given above, that's the variable that is either m, if we're using the uh, y equals b plus mx, or c, if we're using the one from before. Um, so one thing that you're going to watch out for when you are uh, when you are reading these questions, again, these are going to be story problems. If you see the phrase rate of change, that means that is slope. That is the slope. So that is either the variable m or c, depending on which form of the equation you prefer to use. And uh, the way that we define this is we have a rate of change or slope is equal to the change in the y variable divided by the change in the x variable. Or uh, what you might have seen in previous courses or hopefully will have seen in previous courses uh, is uh, the change in the y that's the, when we're looking at this graphically, change in the y is uh, vertical and the change in the x is horizontal. So we call this uh, rise over run. Because um, the change in how high it goes up or down, which is the rise over the run, how far it goes left or right. So the rise over run. Um, Okay, sorry, hold on, having a little bit of some technical issues. There we go, rise over run. Uh, so you might've seen that phrase from previous courses or might've heard that phrase in previous courses or possibly other videos if you watch um, instructional videos uh, for mathematics. So rise over run, that's the change in the Y variable over the change in the X variable. Uh, that's how we define slope, that's our rate of change. Um, so we're going to look at Uh, we're going to look at a quick example from then, then we're going to look at a, a full example using the entire equation. So um, let's look at this first example. Uh, sorry, yes? Sorry, I, I, I have to ask, what does, um, how do we figure out that differentiation between the graphing when it comes to like outliers and left skewed and right skewed so uh, oh um it's on homework sorry i missed that last that last part just based on homework just based on homework um yeah. so the uh when when so when you're looking at at the uh graphing and and outliers um that's going to be uh looking at the statistics i can't talk statistics part of it so if you're given a data set or a survey um, then that's where that's going to come into place. You'll have a data set or a survey, um, like you'll have, you'll have uh, say, a, a certain number of the population, let's say uh, 1,000 students that took a survey. Uh, so then you're going to have data points and outliers are going to be um, any value that is significantly different from the rest of the values. Uh, so that's how we distinguish that. Um, when it comes to things like linear modeling, uh, for this, we're not, we're not necessarily going to be given a data set. We're just going to have a, a, a different real, real world situation. And so we're going to see the, uh, in a couple of the ex examples coming up, it's not going to be a survey or we're not looking at 10,000 people. We're just looking at a specific uh, thing. Um, so ho hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, so when, when you're looking at um, outliers, um, then that is specifically for, for a data set. So if you're looking at uh, a survey or a, a large amount of the population that we have data for. Um, and when, when we're talking about linear modeling, we're talking about one specific uh, event or one specific item, one specific location. Um, so this, this uh, maybe, hopefully this will, this will help. 
uh, with this example. So this this example that I want to go over this way this we this one we had uh, from eight A. We have uh, enrollment at a specific uh, high school. So we have enrollment at Belmont High. increases by 25 students per year. Uh, there was a little bit more to this example what, which we had before, um, which you can see in section 8A. Um, so so to, to, help, to help distinguish between the two, um, when we're talking about uh, outliers and things like that, we would be looking at a, a wide range of a whole bunch of different high schools. Here, we're looking at one specific high school. We're looking at Belmont, Belmont High School. Um, so that's that's how you would how you would tell the difference. Um, so with, with linear modeling and exponential modeling, um, outlier doesn't come into play uh, because you're only talking about one specific case. When you're talking about a whole wide range of different cases, like um, uh, all of these high schools in a specific state or something like that, then then you would uh, consider outliers. But uh, when we're talking about one specific case, that's when we get into the modeling part. Um, so hopefully that that answers that question. Um, any other questions up to this point? Okay. Um, so this is what we had, and and again, I'm keeping my my eye on chat because I know that that uh, some individuals don't don't like to speak or might not have a microphone, so it might take a little while to to type out. So I'm keeping my eye on chat if there are any questions there. Uh, but continuing on, then. Um, so whenever you see this, uh, something per something in this case, students per year that is a rate of change. So here, this is a rate of change. And again, it's not going to let me write any further than that. Rate of change or slope. Uh, so whenever you see, in this case, students per year, we'll see some other examples, like if you're talking about uh, the change in price over time could be uh, uh, dollars per year. If you're talking about um, traveling, you could see miles per hour. That would also be a rate of change. So whenever you see rate of change, that is slope. And um, if you remember from our, our section on uh, units and unit conversions, we can write this as uh, M equals we have 25 students goes in the top per one year. And so you can say this is a positive 25. And this also tells us that our y variable, if we were to graph this, what would go in the uh, up and down would be students and what would go left and right. Our x variable would be year. Um, so we have our uh, y variable as well is going to be students and our x variable is year or time. Let me move that a little bit so I can write a little bit further here. Okay, so again, that, that's just a quick example of slope. Um, and we're going to look at a, at a, close, at a more uh, in-depth example next, but I wanted to tie this back to what we talked about from last section. Um, so any questions up to this point? Okay. So again, in, in this section, some of the homework problems are going to be story problems. And if you see, if you see the phrase rate of change is, and they're telling you that's your slope, or if you see something like this, uh, students per year, um, dollars, per e dollars per week, uh, miles per hour, that is also a rate of change. That's going to be your slope as well. 
So you're looking for those, those two things, either the phrase rate of change or something like this, in, in this case, students per year, looking for that, that type of thing. And um, also, while I'm thinking about that, slope can be positive or negative. Positive means that it's increasing and negative means it's decreasing. So in this case, the enrollment was increasing by 25 students per year. If it was decreasing, it would be a negative. And that's going to stay consistent with um, all of these problems. So if we're talking about uh, on the price of something over time, like the dollar amount per year or per week, if it's increasing, it's gaining value. If it's decreasing, it's losing value. Uh, anything like that. So again, we can have positive or negative. Positive means that it, it, that it is increasing. Negative means that it is decreasing. Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense. So again, this, was, this first example was just a real quick example on slope. Uh, and rate of change, tying that to what we had in chapter eight. Okay, uh, so let's continue on. So let me get a fresh page here. There we go. And let me adjust that. Okay, that's about as good as I can, I can get this. So again, we're going to use the equation uh, y equals b plus mx. We're here, m is slope. All right, so let's look at an example. So this one is gonna be more in depth. Uh, we're going to find the equation uh, of this. So we have the price of a particular model of car is $10,000. $10,000 uh, today and rises with a constant rate. So again, that's going to be one of our phrases there, rate, rate of change or constant rate of $980 year. And we want to know how much will the car uh, cost in 2.7 years. Okay. So uh, first thing that I would do now this does, this is not the only way to do to do, uh, do these problems. So the first thing that I would do uh, is we need to write the equation and I start with the slope. So you're looking for what is your rate of change or your constant rate or looking for that word rate or uh, looking for that, in this case, a dollar amount per year. So dollars per year. So um, step one, we're going to find the equation. Also, uh, when when you are doing the homework for this, it's going to tell you, uh, potentially it will tell you what variables, well, okay, not potentially, it will tell you what variables it wants you to use for different things. So here, um, we're going to use P for price, the price of the vehicle, and we're going to use T for time. All right, our slope, our rate of change is $980 per one year. So that's a positive $980. This also tells us that our x variable 
uh, y variable is going to be dollars, which in this case is p, and our x variable is year, which we're going to use uh, t for time. So p for price, t for time. Okay. So we have Uh, we were given this y equals b plus mx. We're going to replace everything that we have so far. Uh, instead of the y variable, we want to use p for price. So the price is equal to uh, b we haven't talked about yet. So we'll talk about that next. So we'll leave that alone for now. m is the slope, which we had was 980. And instead of x, we're using t for years, so t. Okay, now we have a little bit more, more to go, but I want to make sure, um, are there any questions up to this point? I want to check to see if, if uh, you guys are following along and if there are any questions on that. Yeah. Oh, a lot of questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. For so, I know I can, I can probably get it out of the textbook, but this, and I'm sure I'm not alone. Please explain this again. Okay. So, um, all right, so let's go, let's go, let's scroll back up so we can see our, our question here. So we have the, the price of a particular model of car is this, this certain amount and rises with a constant rate of $980. So we want to find, we want to find the equation first. Um, but the last part we will look at, this is kind of a two-step problem. So step one, we're going to find the equation. Step two, we're going to look at how much the car will cost in 2.7 years. Um, so the equation that we have, the form of the equation is y equals b plus mx. Uh, so that's, that's what we want to find. So we want to find um, what is y, what is b, what is m, what is x. Now the, the y and the x variables, those are going to uh, change potentially depending on the problem. Uh, and you're going to find that from your slope. So the, one of the key things, one of the key properties here uh, is rate or uh, rate of change or rate or slope. Um, all of those words meaning the same thing. In this example, that's $980 per year. So our slope uh, or our rate of change in this equation, that y equals b plus mx, we use m for that. And this is $980 per year. So we write that as a fraction. So that's the $980 on the top. The per is the division, the, the uh, division bar, and then the one year goes on the bottom. So we have one year. Uh, now I'm just simplifying that here. This we could say is dollars, oh, that's not dollars, dollars uh, per year, if we wanted to include the uh, unit there. All right, so we identify the slope. Next, we want to, um, instead of using the y and the x, because um, for these, these, these uh, problems on Pearson, we're going to be using different variables instead of just y and x. Um, so the, if, if we go to the previous page, let me go to the previous page here. Uh, the slope is the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. Uh, so we can find what, is, what are we using for the y uh, variable, what are we using for the x variable, uh, from the slope. So we go to our problem. Uh, so the y variable is on top. That is the money amount. So we're using P for price. And that will be given to you in the problem. Uh, in, on Pearson, it will say use P for price. So we'll, have, we'll be given what variable we, we are, are required to use. So the, the uh, y variable is p so we're replacing because that's on the top of our slope is the price is is the is the top of our fraction so we're using p for instead of y 
and then we want to use t for time and again that's going to be given for you um, in Pearson they're going to say use t variable for time and in this case in our slope that's the bottom that's the denominator and so in this case that is our x variable so we find our y variable is p our x variable is t so instead of writing y and x we just replace that with p and t and then this m our slope that was the 180 so we just replace that in, in the equation so hopefully uh, hopefully that makes a little more sense. Any other questions so far? Okay, um, now we do have a little bit more to go, uh, but I wanna make sure that this is making sense so far, so. Questions are good. Be sure to ask questions if you're not following. That's, that's fine, that's, that's what lecture is for. Okay, um, and I am keeping my eye on chat. And I'm not seeing any questions pop up yet. All right, so the next thing is this B. Uh, now B, this is always going to be the initial amount. So if we look at the problem here, how much is the car worth right now? How much is it worth initially? Well, that's, that's given to us right here. It's $10,000 today. So that is, the, that is its current price, that's its initial price. So our equation that we get is the price is $10,000 today plus $980 times however long we have. So that's the equation, uh, that's the linear model that represents this situation. So we have, first off, we have modeled the situation using a linear equation. Um, now again, we're not, not quite finished, but that is how we find the equation here. So any questions on that? Okay, then uh, the next part is how much will the car cost in 2.7 years? So in order to find that, step two, how much will it cost in 2.7 years? Well, we plug that into our T variable. So we have the price is going to be $10,000 plus $980 times, or the $980 per year times 2.7 years. And then we use our four function, uh, four function calculator, our non-programmable calculator, which we bet you, you hopefully do have, so you can follow along. So we do the 10,000, plus 980 times 2.7. And in this case, we get that the price is equal to $12,646 is how much it will cost in 2.7 years. Okay, so any questions? on this first part then. Okay, um, so I, I do realize this is uh, a little bit different from how we approached it in the last chapter that maybe that's why, um, maybe that's why the author split these up uh, when we're talking about modeling, coming up with the equation, it is a little bit of a different process. Um, all right, and then another question we can ask is how do we graph this? How do we graph 
this. All right, and I'm going to need a new page. Okay, so we had our equation was the price equals $10,000 plus $980 per year times T number of years. And to graph this then, what we're going to look at, we had the X variable was time, which was T. The Y variable is price, which was P. So whenever we are setting up the graph, we're just going to set up our axis like that, our axes. I don't know how to pronounce the plural for that. Our X axis, uh, the run was time and the Y axis was price. Now to graph this, this is always going to be the Y axis. That's going to be our starting point. So here we'll have 10,000. And then to get the, the uh, uh, graph, we use our slope. So here the slope, as soon as my computer decides to work, there we go, slope was 980 over one, which is the rise over run. And again, my computer's not letting me write there. Let me move this and then move it back. Rise over run. Okay. So to graph this, we're going to go 980. Uh, the run is going to be one. It's going to go one unit over. So this will be one year. This would be two years. This would be three years. And the rise is 980. And so that's going to be one point. And then we just connect the two points with the line, which is harder to do digitally than on paper. All right. Um, so the B value always goes on the Y axis, always goes right here. So in this case, that's our 10,000. We just find where that is at. We graph that point here. And then to find the next point, we use our slope. So we use the denominator. We go one unit over. So that will give us the scaling for our time here, and then the y value goes up 980. And then we connect that with the line. I have a question. Uh, yes. So when you say it goes up 980, is that just like your estimation of how far up you think 980 is? Uh, yeah, so that <laughs> that is uh, very much not to scale here, um, but I wanted to make it visible for the notes. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you're graphing it, um, it should be, it should be closer to scale. I mean, obviously, if this is ten thousand, that's not nine eighty. That's that's looks like it should be another ten thousand. Um, but just for the sake of of clarity for notes, I wanted to make it uh, more visible. So, that is a good Thanks. point. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions? These are good questions. Okay. All right. Um, again, uh, I, I have said this before, uh, but I'm just going to remind you guys of this, um, that hopefully you still are reading through the sections because the book is going to approach this in a different way than I am. Um, so make sure that you read the, read the book. Uh, repetition is the best way to learn. And if the book isn't, isn't clear, isn't making sense, then there are other, other resources as well. There are uh, some good instructional videos um, on YouTube. I think uh, Khan Academy, is that what they call it, is one of them which is good, which also approaches uh, the subject, the material in a different way than I do, which is not, is not bad. It's just, you know, uh, uh, another resource for you guys if you need it. Um, because sometimes if I don't approach it in a way that makes sense because of your learning style, 
maybe Khan Academy does, or maybe there's another uh, resource that does. Um, okay, I want to go over one more quick example for these linear functions. Um, so this one is, so with linear modeling, there are going to be uh, two types of equations, uh, or sorry, two types of problems. First type is the story problem, which is kind of like what we went over just now. And the other type is looking at just the equation itself. Um, now the second part, the second type, just looking at the equation itself is a lot easier um, than coming up with the equation, but uh, it does have those, those two. So let's look at, um, let's look at just the equation part. So we're going to consider the linear function or linear equation or linear model. Again, those three phrases in this, in this chapter, uh, in this section all mean the same thing. Uh, y equals negative 3x plus 1. Okay, and we want to know what is the slope. Okay, so let me try and give myself some room here. So we have the y equals b plus mx. Um, I have to I have to move that b plus mx. Uh, but remember, addition we can switch the order, so we could also write this as mx plus b. So the slope. Um, whenever you're looking at an equation, in this case, we're keeping the y and the x, which is fine, uh, but you might have other variables. The slope is always going to be the number that is multiplied to the variable. Oh, thanks, I appreciate that. Um, so we're looking for the number that is multiplied to the variable. In this case, what number is multiplied to the variable? And in this example, that is uh, negative three. Since we have negative three times the variable x, so the slope is negative three. Uh, what is the y-intercept? Intercept, I should write that out, intercept. So, oops, doesn't look like a question mark, question mark. Um, so the y-intercept will always be zero comma b. So in this case, b, that is the number that is by itself. So in this case, the number that is by itself is one. So in this case, for this example, that is zero, one. So there's our y-intercept, there is our slope. And then uh, last thing, what does the graph look like? Now for these ones, um, for the last one, we didn't do negative values because there can't be, I'm having a really hard time drawing these straight. Uh, you can't have a negative time, you can't have a negative, well, a negative price value for the car. You can have negative money amount, but not for the price of the car in this case, um, in, in that example. So here, our y-intercept, is that is one up. Remember, we always go to whatever this value is. So we go one unit up. And then for the slope, we go over, the slope is negative three. So we either go a positive three and a negative one. So we go three units over and negative one down, or we go negative three to the left and a positive one up. So we would go negative three here and one here. And uh, these points are the points of the line. So that gives us our, our graph. We only need to find one, but um, just to demonstrate what a negative slope looks like. Uh, okay, so any example, uh, <laughs> examples, any questions on this example or anything up to this point? Did you say, did you say you go up one, wait, up three over one 
or was it up one over three? Oh, right. Sorry. I, I completely switched that, didn't I? Uh, I'll, I I'll fix that. Yep, yep. I'll, let, me, let me fix that. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so the slope. Uh, let, me, let me write this down here. Um, so the slope is negative 3, which we can say is negative 3 over 1, but we can also say that's 3 over negative 1. So our rise should be either up 3, so we go up 3 units, and then negative 1 to the left, so negative 1, which is there, or down 3, so we go 3 units down, 1, 2, 3, and to the right by 1 from, from that point. So that is going to be our, our equation. So, and on there I, I switched the x and the y, I apologize. Yeah, so the rise is either a positive 3 or negative 3, and the run is either a 1 or a negative 1, depending on which way you're looking at it. So this one, you go uh, down 3 and right 1. Or for this one, you go up 3. And it's not letting me write. Up 3 and left okay computer stop doing that left one there we go so that middle point is that what was that point uh so that is the y-intercept oh okay, okay which in this case is b which is a positive one for this example yep Uh, which we had, if I go up a little bit more, right there. Yep, good. Um, so if it was not one, if it was a negative, it would be below the x-axis, or if it was two, it would be up to, yeah, whatever that that uh, value is right there. Oop. There we go. Connect that. Okay, um, any other questions on this example? Okay. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions. I am keeping my eye on chat. So that is 9b. So 9b, we're just taking a, a slightly different approach to our, our linear, um, linear growth, and we're looking at linear models uh, instead. Um, and approaching it from a slightly different way. So in this case, we're looking for the equation. So oftentimes, when you're given, when you're given a story problem, it'll be a two-step problem. Step one, find the equation. And then step two, answer specific question. So in the last example, the story problem example, the question was, how much will the price of the vehicle be after 2.7 years. And so we use the equation that we found in step one to answer the question. Um, so whenever you have a story problem, it's a, a generally going to be a two-step two -step problem. Step one, find the equation. Step two, answer the question using the equation you found. Um, and in Pearson, there will be some homework questions that will ask you for the equation and I think there are a few that just uh, ask you for the solution. Um, but I think, uh, I think the majority, they ask you first, what is the equation? Second, what is, uh, what is the answer to the question? Which again, you use the equation um, that you found. Okay. So the next section, 9C, is on exponential modeling. Uh, with exponential modeling, uh, we're not going to do much with the graphs, uh, because graphing these um, is a little bit more trouble than what it's worth uh, for, this, for this course. Um, but we can look at 
uh, what is the equation and we can look at um, answering a question depending on the equation. So let's, let's look at what is the exponential model, uh, exponential equation. Again, those two words are the, those two phrases are the same thing. Exponential model, exponential equation, uh, two phrases for the same thing. And then we'll look at um, how to apply that to story problems, or I guess, uh, yeah, story problems. Okay, uh, so this is 9c, which is on exponential, exponential models. And so we have the equation or the model is given by Q equals Q naught. So we use a Q with a subscript zero times one plus R to the T variable. Um, now, again, I want to tie this back to what we had. Let me grab my notes, make sure I'm using the same variables we had. Uh, so what I gave you the equation was A equals I times one plus T to the power of T. And this, uh, sorry. And that was from section eight A. So again, the same, same equation, we're just using different variables here. Uh, but I want to try and stick with somewhat with what the book has. So here Q is the value or amount after T time units. Q naught is the initial value. R here we call the fractional growth rate or we could also say uh, decay rate because remember if it's if it's uh, positive if it's increasing uh, then it's growth if it's decreasing then it's then it's decay and he is is time. And so you'll notice those are more or less exactly what we had from uh, chapter eight. But again, we're just uh, sticking with what the book is using the variables the book is using. Um, so let's look at an example. And again, with these story problems, it's basically a two step two step process. Step one, find the equation or the model that represents the problem. And then step two, use that equation or model to solve the, to uh, answer the question that is, that is presented. And so uh, the example that I wanna look at for this one, we have a privately, privately owned forest. has 1,500,000 acres of old growth being cleared at a rate of 3% per year. And we wanna know how many acres have yet to be cleared after five years. Okay, so this is our story problem. We have a privately owned forest has uh, 1.5 million acres 
of old growth that we are clearing out and it's being cleared at a rate of 3% per year. And we wanna know how many acres uh, do we have left to clear after five years? So again, a two-step problem. Uh, step one, find the model, find the equation that represents the problem. So, Uh, step one, find the equation. I'm going to put in parentheses model because, again, we're using those two words interchangeably uh, for this. And so our equation, because we have this is exponential, uh, an exponential model, we have Q equals Q naught. And again, I'm just using the variables from this chapter. Uh, 1 plus r to the power of t uh, to the power of t. There we go. All right. Where q naught is the initial amount. So in this case, what is the initial amount of acres that we have to clear? Well, in this example, oh yes, good, okay. So there was a little bit of a delay there, good. All right, the uh, 1.5 million acres. So 1,500,000, excellent. R, what is the uh, rate of clearance in this case? And that is 3%, but remember, we always want this as a decimal. So that's going to be 0 0.03. Now, here we have to be careful. Um, is the number of acres that we have to clear going up or going down? It's going down, exactly. Because as we clear, right, the number of acres that we have to, left to do is going down, which means that this has to be negative, a negative 0 0.3. It's a, a decay, a exponential decay, because we are decreasing the amount that we have to clear. Good. So our equation, so for this, we only have two things to find for the equation, Q naught and R. Uh, so we have Q is equal to 1,500, uh, sorry, 1, 500, 000 times 1 minus 0 0.03 to the t power. So that is our equation or our model. Again, we're using those two words interchangeably. The equation is the model, the model is the equation. Okay, so any questions on that? Now this one is a little bit tricky. So remember, if it's increasing, then you're going to use plus uh, positive r. If it's decreasing, then the rate of change is negative. It's going down, so you have to minus. In this case, it is decreasing. We're clearing. We're clearing the forest, so the amount that we have left to clear is decreasing. It's going down, so you have to use minus in this case. So that's one thing to watch out for. That's one thing that they might try to trick you with in the homework is whether it's plus or minus. So, so just remember, if, it, if, if the amount we're talking about is increasing, then it's positive. If the amount we're talking is decreasing, then it's negative. Okay, so step two, find how much we have left to clear after five years. So step two, we set t equal to five and solve. So we have our Q is equal to 1,500,000 uh, 1, times 1 minus 0 0.03 to the power of 5. We're using 5 for our years. 
And so we plug that into our four function calculator. Uh, so let's go to our calculator here. Let me see if, if this will work. Okay, can you guys see the calculator all right? Did I, did I do this, this correctly? Hopefully you should see the calculator. Yeah, we can see it. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so just as a reminder of how we enter this in, we uh, do the one uh, five zero 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 zero. Make sure I have the right number of zeros. One million five hundred thousand zero. Okay, times parentheses one minus our rate was point zero three parentheses to the power of this one has the y to the x button. Well, I guess x to the y, but that is the same thing. Uh, parentheses, our power is five parentheses, and then equals. So we have uh, 1 million, I think, yeah, 1,288,000 and 101 acres. So let's, let's just round to the nearest uh, acre. Um, so let's go back to our digital paper here. Uh, equals, oh, come on computer, there we go. Equals 1,288,101 acres left to clear. And again, um, this should make sense in the context of the problem. So you wanna make sure, does this make sense? Um, in terms of, should we have a greater amount or a smaller amount? In this case, we decided since we are clearing, clearing the forest of, of old growth, then the amount that we have should decrease. So it should be less than 1.5 million. In this case, we got 1.28 something something million. So it is going down. So it does make sense in the context of the problem. Um, so any questions on, on this example? Okay, and, and again, I believe in the homework, they, they, um, there should be two types. Well, there should be one, uh, most of the homework will kind of step you through it. So we'll say, what is the equation? And then what is the, amount left after five years. Um, if it just, if it just uh, skips the equation part, you should still be in the habit of finding the equation for that. Um, okay, so that is, that is uh, chapter nine. So again, just going into the equations a little bit more in detail. Um, we, do have, we do have a few other equations here. Let me let me uh, get a clean piece of paper just to write down what we have. So we have exponential exponential growth versus decay. So the first equation we had was Q equals Q naught times one plus R again, minus R if we're decreasing to the power of T. And this is given uh, percent change, R percent change. Let me see if it'll let me write to the end there, okay. Then we also have our, um, if you remember from chapter, what was it, eight, uh, section 8B, we have also doubling time and half-life. So that also comes back. Uh, so in this, we have Q equals for our doubling time, Q naught times, let me try and uh, times two to the power of lowercase t divided by capital T double. So remember that was our doubling time. This is given doubling 
time, which we used a capital T lowercase double for that. And then our half-life was Q equals Q naught times one half to the power of T divided by T half. So if we're given uh, half-life. Oh, almost made it to the end of the page there. Half life, there we go. T sub half, subscript half. Um, so these are the equations that we had. This was, this can also uh, be found in the book on page 565. So they repeat these equations. Whoops, should be 565, not 5.65. Sorry, 565. Um, so when you are looking at these problems, again, you want to look for those uh, specific words. Uh, percent change means if it's increasing by this percent or decreasing by this percent, then that's the first equation. If you see that uh, the doubling time is given by, say, five years, then that's going to be the second equation. Or uh, half-life is 2.7 years, that's going to be the third equation. Um, and again, those two equations are almost exactly the same, well, are exactly the same as what we had before, just using the different variables. Again, we're using the variables that the author uses in this chapter. Um, so those, those equations are basically the exact same. Uh, you just want to uh, distinguish between whether you have doubling time half-life or a, a rate of increase or decrease. Um, so any questions on, on that? Or anything up to this point? Okay, um, so that is chapter nine. Uh, so again, for test three, we're going to have uh, chapter uh, six and then chapters eight and nine. Uh, so the chapter six is the statistics stuff and then eight and nine are the linear and exponential models. Um, so again, a lot, of, a lot of what we did, especially for the exponential uh, modeling is, is um, basically exactly what we did in, in chapter eight. Uh, the linear stuff, we added a little bit more. We added graphs and a little bit of some terminology slope, uh, which is rate of change, and um, the y-intercept, which is the b variable. Um, but that is, that's basically what we have there. So um, next class, we will uh, start the review. So on Thursday, we'll start the review. And then next Tuesday, we'll have the exam. Uh, the exam, because now we are remote, uh, the exam will be given through Pearson. Um, so it will be very similar to the practice exams on Pearson, but it will be an actual exam. Uh, the, the practice exams will still be available, but uh, you will see that the exam will be there. Um, because of time zones uh, and internet connectivity and all of that, I'm gonna have the tests up, uh, I'm, I'm thinking for 24 hours. I know not uh, some of you had to move move back um, because of of what happened this last week, which is fine. Um, so you might be in a different time zone. It'll it'll be up for about twenty four hours, and uh, because of internet connectivity, I don't want to put a time limit on it really because that. I mean, you know, if you connect and you have ten minutes and then it disconnects, that's really not fair. So. Um, but it will be on Pearson, so uh, just keep an eye up for that. I will, uh, I will send out an email on, on Tuesday, next Tuesday, when the exam is, to let you know. And because it's the exam, we won't have a lecture that day. Um, it, would, it would just be like if we were in class taking it, but you're just gonna have to do it um, on your own for this one. Uh, any last minute questions before I let you guys go? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I will be uploading this video as well as the notes to Web Campus. So in case you had any connectivity issues or in case you need to uh, uh, watch it, uh, if, if any of the parts are, were unclear, you can go back and, and rewatch it. Um, 
But uh, if you do have any other questions, you are welcome to either send me an email or come to my digital office hours. Uh, otherwise, I will see you, let's see, I don't even remember if today is Tuesday or Thursday. Today is Tuesday, so I'll see you on Thursday. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. And I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting now. Thank you. Thank you. Professor? Uh, yes. I was going to ask you, because I wasn't able to make it to last class, um, about the T, the two T double stuff and the half stuff. Um, uh, are yes. those going to be numbers? Like just on like fraction? Um, it will be numbers. So uh, let me let me see if I can find an example. Sorry. Um, that's a good question. Uh, oh, hold on one second. Let me. I'm gonna no stop problem. The, stop the recording.